Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all for the mediation, the most popular alternative dispute resolution. To handle this session, we have an eminent and a senior advocate, it's none other than Mr. B.C. Thiruvengadam, popularly known as Thiru. May I request our chairperson, A.P. Gita, to escort the speaker onto the dais? And welcome to Paul Bukhe. Thank you, Madam. I take this opportunity to give a brief introduction of the Mr. Thirvankadam. I will give very brief because uh, if I read full profile, it will take another half an hour. <laughs> so much is that. I will make it as uh, little as possible. He is a senior lawyer and uh, standing in the Bar Council for the last 35 years. Interestingly, he is a commerce graduate and uh, he has passed intermediate uh, CA exam also. He is a patent agent of Government of India, certified US patent prosecutor. Sunnyvale, California and certified mediator by ISTL San Francisco. He is a senior group A counsel for the government of India in the Supreme Court. His legal practice is a rare combination of litigation and non-litigation. He has handled several, several mergers and acquisitions and advised on matters relating to stock options, public offers and private equity. As a litigator, he is well known in handling corporate disputes, especially in the area of corporate oppression and mismanagement. He has successfully mediated several international and domestic disputes and deal with mediations. He is a co-founder of the famous Bangalore International Mediation and Arbitration and Consolation Centre. As a guest faculty, he teaches technology law at the Chicago Kent College of Law. He is the currently chairperson of the Bangalore chapter of the Society of Indian Law Firms and so many other institutes and firms. He has won several global awards and recognitions. He was conferred with the Cambridge, Cambridge University International Professional Award in 2010. He has been honored by several universities abroad and enjoys the privilege of having been featured in 100 legal luminaries of India by Texas Next. With this brief introduction, I welcome you, sir. Over. Thank you very much. To each and every one of you, thank you. To the Institute of Chartered Accountants, the office bearers, chairman, everyone, for giving me this opportunity to share my experience about mediation. How many of you experience mediation? It's going to be more interactive session and I want there will be a role play. I want you to participate in this role play also. Have anyone witnessed a mediation process? No one. So before we go to mediation, let us talk, because when we talk about mediation, arbitration, everyone say that it is an alternative dispute resolution process. General norm is arbitration, mediation, conciliation, they all call this alternative mediation process. But we all fail to understand from time immemorial, a new regime of dispute resolution came as an alternative for an existing one. Going to the stone age, how was the dispute resolved? A dispute was resolved by way of violence. Might was right. There was no rule of law. When there is no rule of law, the survival of the fittest. So basically the disputes arose those days 
primarily for food, for land to cultivate fighting over cattle or land to graze cattle and then obviously for women. So those days, not even uh, you would have seen battles being fought on certain disputes which according to us you find you find it very very trivial now. So violence was a way people kill each other or hit each other and show the superiority to ensure that there is no dispute. So dominant over an inferior person was the best way that people consider that a dispute can be resolved. Then man became a bit smarter. So he decided, why should I fight? I will engage people to fight for me. So the term gladiators came. So these are all proxies, they fought the gang war we can, today modern day gang war they say. The leaders, they set up the people, the thugs to fight each other in gang wars. Like the, those days, if any dispute has to be resolved, each one will set their own gladiators, they will fight and try to resolve the disputes. In India we had what is called the panchayat system. I don't have to really explain as to what panchayat system is all about but it's very important to understand in the context of mediation, many people consider erroneously that mediation is nothing but something like panchayat. It is not so. The real system of panchayat in ancient India was not only really adversarial but very democratic. Panchayats, in, the word panch means five. Five from a village, five from a community, or five from a trading community sat together to resolve a dispute. There was a fair opportunity given to all the parties to submit their dispute what the case was. And by majority ruling and by also by consensus, the five community leaders sat and resolved the dispute gave a verdict. Such a verdict those days were very fair. But over a period of time, the panchayat got clouded with various prejudices. Today the term panchayat are called, normally referred to as kangaroo courts. Very arbitrary. So, an arbitral order is passed, people may be excommunicated, thrown out of the village, penalties imposed. There are so many ways it is done. Well, Panchayat was also part of a dispute resolution mechanism. In alternate to the Panchayat system, the British has brought in the judicial system. So can we say arbitration, mediation, alternative to judicial system? No. Judicial system itself is an alternative to an existing system at the point of time. Before the judicial system, things were taken before zamindars for dispute resolution. People used to go to the kings for dispute resolution. And there is no fixed norms. Generally in India, people follow what is called manadharma. Goes by scriptures. Dispute resolved by religious practice, custom practice. So British has brought in an recognized adversarial judicial system called the judiciary. It's an adversarial system. The people who was that week can go and file a case, another person is summoned to the court, opportunity is given to be heard, then evidence is recorded. Based on the evidence, an evaluation is done and a an judgment on our decree was passed. <coughs> so the concept of adversarial system got a solid foundation and it has been remained throughout the world, spread all over the world the past 150 years. Have you ever heard of this person called Roscoe Pound? Roscoe Pound lived in the turn of 
the 20th century. Roscoe Pond was a botanist and is also an anthropologist. This gentleman became the dean of the Harvard Law School. Does it make any sense? A botanist, an anthropologist becoming the principal or the dean of a law school, the famous law college in the world today is Harvard, Harvard Law School. Why so? Being an anthropologist, he looked into the social problems that prevail in the society and brought in the concept of social justice. He introduced a norm called social justice and did extensive research and felt that law should not be in the hands of the judiciary alone. Law should not be in the hands of lawyers alone. Law should not be in the hands of the legislators alone. Law should not be controlled by any group, but law should percolate for the benefit of the society. In 1934 or so, if, if I remember correctly, sorry, in 1906, much earlier, he was invited by the American Bar Association to deliver a talk, the annual congress of the American Bar Association. And he called the lawyers stupid. He called the lawyers a bunch of greedy, stupid people. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> the reason that he gave was people were dissatisfied with justice dispensation. Administration of justice in the US at that point of time had collapsed. Today we are saying that oh, Indian judiciary is slow, snail pace, nothing happens. This is not new to the world. Such a thing existed in America at the turn of the 20th century. So he blamed the lawyers, listen, are you part of the society? If you want to be part of the society, what should you do? He criticized the judges, he criticized the judiciary, he criticized the education and teaching law, apart from lawyers. He brought in the concept, concept, law must be stable, but it should not be static or not, should not stand still. Law must be stable, should not stand still. Law should be evolution. There should be evolution of law, adaptation to the changes. So there was a reason for it. Just watch this one. Can someone dim this light?
The prisons were directly monitored by the courts, by the judiciary. The judiciary said to the governments, listen, there's no space in the court, in the jails. So you need to create more space. We will not dump these convicts like pigeons in a small cage. Till you do that, we're going to set these people free. So then what happens when a person, a convict gets free? The victim or the victim's family get very agitated. They lose this faith in the system. They think the judiciary is faith. They may even attribute motives to the judiciary and the lawyers. So more they fail, they involuntarily tend towards alternative dispute and resolution mechanism like the mafia and the underworld. It was not a good thing for the society. This was realized by Roscoe Pawn way back in the 1906, which you saw. He gave a warning call to the American lawyers. Listen, you'll be in deep problem. People will lose faith in you guys if you don't do something about it. So in 1906, he introduced a concept called structured mediation. If courts are not able to give justice, evolve a mechanism that will render justice, that will render social justice. When take away the powers of the judiciary, ensure that there will be a facilitator who will facilitate parties to come to a dispute resolution. One other is mediation. And another concept he introduces is called plea bargaining. Mediation with respect to civil cases. Plea bargaining with respect to criminal cases. Can you recall in the recent time, what is a plea bargaining case which is affecting India? No, not Jadav, not Jadav. Yeah, again with America, I'm talking about. The person who was arrested for involving himself in the Bombay terrorist attack. No. And what has happened? He surrendered to the US police, FBR, and said, okay, I am going to confess. But when I do that, I'm going to bargain for certain privileges. It's called plea bargaining. I will not be sentenced to death. I should not be export, expedited, I think, uh, ex, uh, extradited to India. Various concessions he demands. So based on that, there's a plea bargaining. The bargain happens between the court, the police, and the accused. So again, Roscoe Pond is a proponent of both mediation in one hand, and plea bargain. But that was not realized by the American bar. They allowed, they ignored the warning made by Roscoe Pound. And things became bad to worse in the mid 60s and 70s. In the slide in the middle, it's a visiting card of a debt recovery agent. This debt recovery agent is not far off, it's about 305 kilometers from Bangalore in Chennai. This debt recovery agent probably gives the x-ray film containing his, this visiting card. He says, see, I have broken the little finger of a defaulter. So it's, he probably distributes his credentials as his visiting card. Are we different from America in the 70s and are we different now? See, we are following the American footstep, right? We are all saying that America is advanced, yes. But what is it we are about? 40, 50 years, 30, 40 years behind America. The democracy of more than 250 years, we are just a young democracy of 70, so give us a margin. Sorry, that should not be an 
Hence that. But do you know how many people go to litigate the courts and lawyers? Do you know the litigation uh, backlog cases in the country? Three and a half crores. Three and a half crores. Okay. So do you think a lot of people go to courts? There's a backlog. Backlog. So we call it as docket explosion in the courts, right? But are you aware of a factor called docket exclusion? Do you know what is docket <coughs> exclusion? Cases that don't go to the court at all, disputes that don't go to the court at all, that's called docket explosion. exclusion. Just watch this uh, file diagram which went come up. People, this is a survey conducted in India. People who believe court will provide a solution. 9%. People who believe court or litigation will not provide a solution. 52% of the population. People who believe arbitration is the best option. 1%. People who believe politicians, police, bureaucrats will resolve their disputes. It's very common. If there's any problem, you go to the local police station. Any problem, you go take the help of a local <coughs> MLA or MP. In India, the religious leaders play a very important role. You go to Swamiji's, we go to Matadri's and ask them to see if there's a problem, resolve it. A family problem is always resolved by a family, guru or some, some spiritual leader within the family, in, known to them. Ah, look, I have a great company. As a lawyer, someone who can match me, people who believe anti-social elements like Kundas are the best alternative dispute resolution mechanism. Can I be proud of this? Can all of us be proud of this? No, all of us cannot be proud of this. So, 91% of the disputants don't come to the courts, please bear in mind. When 91% doesn't come to the court, and only 9% go into litigation, imagine the amount of docket exclusion, even 1% of this 91% shifts to this 9 plus 1, what will happen to your docket explosion? Have you ever imagined? We are struggling. Okay, why don't the, there are 52% which I said would not go to the courts. Custom, social and family stigma. Do you agree with me? How many of you agree? Can you give me one example? Husband and wife, horrible matrimonial dispute. Husband beating the wife, cruelty to the core. But wife says, no, I don't want a divorce. Why? The tag of divorce is a stigma according to her. Family disputes. People don't want to go to the courts because they don't want to wash the dirty linen in public. We don't know <coughs> what is hidden. Fine, these are legitimate reasons. 11% they don't want to come. So 52 minus 11. So it's still a 41%. 26% <coughs> feel that litigation in courts are extremely expensive. In your accounting concept, it's what? Bad money, chasing, good money. Okay. As accountants, you may not advise your clients to spend money on a wasteful litigation. Because why? Because it's delay, time-consuming process. <coughs> and then, you are not sure whether you are going to win or lose. I may tell my clients, I will definitely win your case. 
Every lawyer tells his client that he's going to win the case. Okay? But how many people can win a case? Can the, the plaintiff and the defendant win both, both of them be winners? There can be only one winner. There cannot be a draw like a football match. So there's an uncertainty. So if I promise that I'm going to win a case and I lose a case, I put the blame again on the parties. Listen, your bad luck. Your time is not good. Or you didn't give proper evidence. You did not disclose these facts. Or the victims did not turn up. The judge is corrupt. The judges did not understand many things. What can I do? Then you prefer that. There's no end for it, right? I'm not doing an harm to my legal profession, let me be very clear. Because only 9% of the population come to me. I want to bring in the 91% to the legal system. Twelve percent refuse to give any details. Let's forget about that. As on January 2015, 55,000 cases are still pending in the Supreme Court and it is not reduced till now, if my information is correct. And high courts and lower courts have 5 million cases pending. This was in 2015. Do you know what is the statistic today? 8 million cases are pending. Do you know why? There are more than 560 vacancies in the High Court. It's not been filled up for the past two years. Subordinate Court, there are 40% vacancies throughout the country. Sir, should the judiciary be faulted or the executive be faulted? Let us not do the blame game here. The point is, the of the cases. There are various factors. Various factors. In spite of the fact that you are saying 55,000 has become 8 million. I'll give you the reasons. I'll come to that. Yeah. I'll explain. Yeah. I'll come please, sir. Yeah. The Supreme Court has the time to get into the administration of the cricket board in the country. Is it very important? Self-appointing its own fraternity. I am not going to get involved in that controversy. I don't want, being a lawyer, I don't want to commit myself to be a contemnor. So I've been very, very careful about this. Okay. Sir, just to add to what he said, did the judiciary wake up late when the case was filed up? See, it's not the question of wake up late. I'll come to this. See this. For a million population, the ratio of judges is 35. In India, it's 30. Now it has come to 3. Vacancies are not filled up. Where does judiciary get money? Judiciary is dependent on the government. You are all accountants. Follow the budgets. Have you ever looked into how much is the budget allocation for judiciary and justice dispensation? Come tell, tell me. Any one of you tell me what is the budgetary allocation in a, in a finance bill towards judiciary. Can you remember, anyone tell? Does not even come to 0.02%. It is not a priority for the government. For a judge, for a court to function, you need minimum 15 supporting staff. You need an infrastructure. The government says they don't have funds. And litigation is the most cheapest in the country. You can go and want for, you can file a suit for injunction for how much, do you know what's the cost of getting it, or filing a petition for a suit for temporary, permanent injunction? Can anyone tell me? I think staff fees is 10% of the... 25 rupees. Suit for injunction is 25 rupees. Do you know what's the cost of a writ petition to file in the High Court? What is the stamp duty you are paying? 100 rupees. For debt recovery, I think it is 10%, sir. Debt recovery doesn't go to the judiciary. Debt recovery is controlled by a mechanism called Debt Recovery Tribunal under the Ministry of Finance. It's a tribunal. I am talking about just the judiciary. I am not talking about the backlog in your income tax appellate tribunal. 
I'm not talking about the company law, the national or company law, criminal law, the earlier company law board or any of the tribunals. If I take that into account, you'll be crossing more than 25 million. How many, can you tell me, how many, how many years does it take for you, your cases in income tax appellate tribunal to be disposed of? Pardon? 12 years. 12 years. Then why blame the judiciary? When the income tax department is funded by the Ministry of Finance. Not only law is there, a chartered account is there, expert in the field. Problem is, judiciary is transparent about this backlog. Tribunals are not transparent about the black backlogs. Today we have constituted NCRP all over the country. Do you know how many vacancies are there? Can anyone tell me, National Company Law Tribunal, how many vacancies are there? There are 40 vacancies. NCRP has been coming to force since one, one and a half years now. Why? People are not willing to join. Do you know what's the salary of an NCLT member? Can you guess? On par with the district judge, this is what I understand. It's not on par with the district judge. It's an ad hoc payment. Whether you're, you're a retired district judge, in addition to your pension, you're given an ad hoc amount, it's about 1,20,000 rupees. Otherwise, it's a wrong figure of 2 lakhs. No other purposes. You don't have a car, you don't have anything. I'm sorry I have to digress but from the total topic. So, whom should you blame? See the statistics now. I'm answering your questions. Average cases handled per day in USA. Three cases by a judge. Average cases in India is 140 cases per day. Average case disposed by a banana by a judge in USA is 22. In India, 60. Percent of the cases referred for mediation, 90 percent. We still don't have the statistic, but it's been fairly large in the past seven, eight years. So, are our judges in a very unenviable position? Have you ever, how many of you have gone to the courts here in Bangalore City Civil Courts? How long does it take for your case to come up? Have you seen the board, how many cases are there listed every day? Not less than 150 cases. By the time the cases are called, it starts at, but it becomes 1231. Please understand, judges are also human beings. Judges are also human beings. I have practiced as a tax consultant too. I used to go and sit in an income tax office corridor for hours together for my case to come up. I have handled more than close to a thousand cases in central circle, search and seizure matters. Sat there for hours together. My hearing time is three o'clock. I go there. The IT will call me at. 5.30. Listen, there's a limitation. I want to close this assessment. Agree to this, I don't, you, I deserve this, you agree to this. Is it justice? Tell me. Are we doing justice to our clients? No. But that cannot happen in the judiciary. In the judiciary, the due process of law has to be done. Evidence, it all depends on the party, whether the case is good or the case is bad, evidence is good, evidence is bad. I am not championing the cause of judiciary. I don't say that everything is clean, that haunted thing. No. We, every, every system has its own setbacks. I was talking about NCLT. Why people don't want to come? Because low salary. And that too, it's a contractual job. I am a practicing lawyer. I go there on a contract for five years. I am not sure whether after fifth year my term will be extended. I give up a very lucrative practice and want to go and become a member of NCLT. And there's no certainty that I can continue after five years. Will I take the risk? But who frames these rules? The judiciary does not frame the rules. It's the legislature and the bureaucrats who do this. Then why blame the system? Why blame the tribunals? Why blame the judiciary? The 
three gross cases pending in 21 uh, Haycourts today. More than, now it's close to about three crores in the subordinate courts. Exclude all the tribunals, exclude all the quasi judicial bodies. The revenue courts, revenue courts headed by Tashil Das, a revenue courts headed by deputy, uh, the deputy commissioners or the collectors. These are the places where the common man goes. A deputy commissioner or a collector never has a sitting. A corporation dispute in BBMP goes on for years, seven years, eight years for a simple dispute on Kadar transfer. These are all not taken into account. Is it not part of justice dispensation? When there is a delay, what happens? In a quasi judicial body, corruption takes place. Everyone wants to beat the queue, beat the time. I am answering your question, gentlemen. Why there is litigation? Why there is backlog? Directly proportional to population increase. And also the literacy level. A literate person thinks more of his rights. You know which is the most litigious state in the country? Can you guess? Kerala. Every family has one koi case or other pending in the courts. Not a single family without a litigation in the, in the courts. Because they are aware of the literacy rate, the height, they are aware of the social rights. So you can't ask people don't, don't get educated, right? So, India is very peculiar. You sneeze, you have a law. Let us take, today we have, in fact I have challenged the insolvency in banking code as absolutely unconstitutional. It's going on in the courts now. Have you ever thought, why should you have the insolvency in banking code 2016? Hardly 10 years ago you had the self facing Act. Prior to that, you have a territory written on that. What is the reason? Surface was brought in. I was involved in the process because the MPA was allowing me. And they said, oh, debt DRT, debt recovery tribunals are unable to solve the process. Tell me in the past 10 years, have all the debt recovery tribunal official presiding officers have been functioned? Most of the time, for a couple of years, bank to debt recovery tribunal did not have a presiding officer. And do you know who funds the debt recovery tribunal? Can anyone guess? By the Indian Bank Association. Indian Bank Association provides the rented space, now they have provided the space for them, furnished them. They reimburse the Ministry of Finance for the cost of running a debt recovery tribunal. Despite funding, you have no presiding officers. So the fault is somewhere and the system is blamed and they say, oh, NPA is alarming. You are looking at the end process without cleaning the source. Are your banks being honest in funding? Are they being prompt in funding? Is there not a delay? How long does it take that you have rules, your laws, RPA guidelines, circulars, notification, everything is there. But how many months they take uh, to get a backlog, to get a sanction like how long does it take? <coughs> yes, APA is alarming. Do you know what is the percentage of 45% 40, of your debt today are on social welfare? <coughs> Agricultural loans, education loans, many, many things, uh, women entrepreneurs, Microfinance. Are you going to recover it? No. Because the system is abused there, not at this end. At the time of dispersal, the process, proper screening is not there. 
every bank official tries to disperse the funds so that he wants to boost up his revenue. Banks are flow. What do they follow? The income is based on accruals, not on cash system, right? So project. Keep debiting the interest of all the part of, of the borrowers. Boost your profit. Impress. Then doctor can see your NPA. To fund it, to cover up your NPA, do a refinance in the days of restructure. So why blame the judiciary for it? Why blame the debt equity tribunal for it? The form like same, same thing with the income tax department. Not this. The question is, what I'm saying is, the, you, there should be a proper screening mechanism. That's it. Ultimately, that if I don't like you, if you know very well, you don't give a proper check. The banking system will not solve the problem. That is the root cause problem. I think we, I'm sorry. I'm, I think I have a very time constraint. Let me go. I'm not going to the topic. But, so excuse me, gentlemen. I think I'll put an end to this discussion now. I'm uh, going beyond my time. So, you are not allowing others to speak. That's the problem. Sir, no, no sir, I'm sorry. It cannot be a dialogue. It cannot be a monologue. Sir, I, this topic is on mediation. And this, sir, sir, will meet. Sir, sir, I, I welcome your question, sir. I welcome your question. Kindly bear with me because I need to finish my talk. I'm not going to reach the topic of what mediation is about. You have made a statement. So I, 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 you I, 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 I thought I can respond to that. So can kindly wait there. We are getting into uh, who is right, who is wrong. I am not the question. You, you talk to me. I will welcome your topic. We are not uh, ordinary people. We have, we have I respect you. Reason. We understand the subject. I, I, and so let us have the discussion in a particular level. Please don't take it as an offense. Kindly allow me to come to the main topic. I have not come to the main topic. Exactly. You reserve the questions at the end. What I meant to say is that. Let me complete my topic and then we will have an open dialogue. I am free. I told you very well. It is going to be an interactive session. But that, that is, I need to complete certain my time and I have given two hours to speak. I have already spent almost one hour. Okay? Now we are coming to the topic of mediation. Mediation is not something new. In the modern concept of modern structured mediation is prevailed in 500 BC. Again, I said in 1906, Roscoe Pond brought in the area. And the modern mediation was introduced by the communist regime in China. Mediation is a major dispute resolution mechanism in China. It has been deep rooted almost 100 years, even before the communists could come in. The first ever mediation enactment was 1947. We call enactment called Federal Mediation Conciliation Service, where they introduce mediation for labor disputes. It took 70 years for the American bar to realize the wisdom of Costco Pound. And a gentleman called, a judge called Warren Knight said that mediation has to be introduced. So American states voluntarily started adopting mediation as an alternative dispute resolution mechanism. And the American Civil Court in 1988 got amended for the first time. It's almost 90 years later they got amended and introduced mediation as an effective area option. Today, private mediation, pre litigation mediation, apart from court and ex mediation, exists substantially in the US and is spreading throughout Europe. 
2007, the International Mediation Institute that was in Hague was established, and various private and institutional mediation started got them affiliated to the center. In 1996, we had the Arbitration and Conciliation Act. Chapter th the part three of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act devotes to what is called conciliation. And there's a reference to mediation there, but there's no definition for mediation. I'll try to distinguish between conciliation and mediation at a later stage. And in 2002, the Civil Procedure Code was amended and Section 89 was introduced, wherein <coughs> the court, in a civil matter, if it feels that there's a possibility of settlement, should persuade the parties to go to any of the resort to any of the ADR options that includes arbitration, mediation, conciliation, judicial settlement and local audit. I will dwell upon that later. 2005, as a private initiative, Madras Mediation Center was established and now it's become part of the High Court of uh, Madras. Around the same time, Delhi Mediation Center was established by the High Court. 2007, Bangalore Mediation Center was started by the High Court of Karnataka. It's the largest mediation center in the country. Today, now, almost every state, every district in the country has a mediation center, which are all connect, attached to the courts. In 2013, Bangalore International Mediation Center was started. It's not only said now recognized as ANSITRA and Government of India. Before I go to the mean, definition of mediation, can we have a very short role play? I want three volunteers. Gentlemen, can you be part of the voluntary team? Come. I need two more volunteers. Can you hurry up please? We have a little limited time. Two more people? Yeah, come, come. One more person. Lady there, please come. Sir, kindly sit down. Take the sentence. I'd like you to be the arbitrator. Come, kindly sit down. Okay. There's going to be a short role play. A very small problem has come to you as an arbitrator. It's not mediation, arbitrator. They are brothers, sons of a very rich businessman. The, bus the father dies, leaving a will where everything is being equally distributed. Okay? But the father has a, a Rolls, very, very expensive vintage Rolls Royce car used by Winston Church. Prices. In the will he writes, this car shall go to my favorite child. Okay? Now, as an arbitrator, you have to give an award as to who is the favorite child. It's not the question of who will get the car. Okay? I'll give you two, two minutes. You can imagine Play a role as to why you have to establish the arbitrator as to why you are a favorite child. Okay? Or one minute each. One minute each. Okay? <coughs> Start with you. You have to tell the arbitrator why you are a favorite child of your father. Sir, I have been taking care of my father. I have been, uh, you know, listening to all his orders, all his wishes, whatever were his demands, I have been uh, following them. I have been taking care of him during his old age. So, I am his favorite child. Perfect. <coughs> Sir, my father has been always looking after me. Whatever were my wishes, he used to fulfill it. Whatever were uh, uh, my... Uh, Requirements, he used to fulfill those. Whenever I requested, uh, he used to fulfill that. 
or whatever uh, I wanted, even before, sometimes even before I asked him, he used to provide me that. I, I was his favorite son, that's why he used to always consult me. So, my limited understanding of the arbitration is something which is governed by an agreement between the parties. If there is an agreement, they come to you. So, if there is an agreement between brother and the sister with reference to sharing of their ancestral property from the father, we will go by that. But the father, that is the will is the document to my knowledge based on what you said. So the car, the uh, Rolls Royce car, uh, he has left it in a, in a matter to be decided kind of a thing. Like, you know, he has not made it absolutely like it will go to the daughter or it will go to the son. He has left it in a matter of debate. But I will go by the first statement that you yes. read out from the will that uh, my properties will go between my children on an equal basis. So, so I decide that the car goes to the daughter and the value of approximately 10 lakhs just for the heck of it, daughter will give to the brother. Okay. Thank you. One second. Are you happy with this verdict? No, I am not happy. That's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Your names are okay. Ms. Ramdhan. Thank you. Sneha. Sneha. Ramesh. Give them a big hand. <laughs> Dissatisfaction of an adversarial proceeding is never ending. This is short example where justice according to our friend here was not done. If it an happy, it may be an award, it is binding, a judgment may be binding, it may end up with the Supreme Court be final, but there is only one happy person. One party can be satisfied, other party will be dissatisfied. <coughs> so the question is, we need to have an alternative to an adversarial process. What is adversarial? An adversarial process is where there is a blame. Here fortunately they didn't blame each other. If I had given this example to a lawyer, they would have said, my brother is bad, he didn't take care of my parents, I am the only one doing it. Or my, this person would have said, no, my sister was taken care of, she was given in marriage with a lot of money and then dowry and this and that, all sort of thing. So blaming is also part of an adversarial process. So what happens in the process, in the sense, in any adversarial process, a dispute may come to an end, but a conflict will remain. A dispute will come to an end, but a conflict will remain. This happens universally, not just here, anywhere in the world. So what is the conflict and dispute? There's a very short example. There are two kids, I come and give a gift to the child. Ram and Shama, the kid children. I give the gift only to a child, it's a maybe a toy train. The children start fighting, right? Now you are the parent, what will you do? They are screaming and think, what, will, what is the first option you can have? First thing is what? Take the toy, lock it and say get lost. Stop fighting. Is your first option. Then you say, okay, I will give it to the eldest child, Ram. Take it. Third is, give it to the younger child. Fourth option, I sit and play with them. Now let's go back. The moment you deprive the both the children of the toy, what works in the mind of the children? The anger intensifies. Each one blames the other child that I am not able to play, the father has locked the toy because you fought with me. So the conflict starts manifesting into a larger conflict, larger hatred. 
if I give the toy to one person, the other person gets unhappy about it. Just like the award that was being passed. Is it practical for you to sit and play always with your children? No. Especially when you have to file your returns and audits. By the time you come home, it will be 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the night. You can't sit and do that. The brunt will be with your other spouse who is to take care of the children. The best option is to try to teach the children as to how to share and play. So what, do you, what is the role that you are playing? You are playing the role of a facilitator. That is what mediation is all about. So conflicts always sparks a huge fire. We don't realize this. A small spark here and there, you never know, gets hidden and it happens. In workplace conflicts, very, very common. And a statement made by a boss to a subordinate hurts him so much that he'll wait for the right opportunity to give it back to the boss or he'll show the anger on the work or the customer or any part. Conflict occurs because of misinformation, disappointments, right? so many factors. It's, it's a subject by itself. Conflict management is a subject by itself. So what do we do? What happens in mediation? Mediation is a process where we help people to recognize that there is more than one view. My friend said, you are not allowing me to have a dialogue. It's not so. The dialogue will happen at the appropriate time. I will respect his view, I may not agree with his view. That is the mediator's point of view. You don't have to agree with every view, but I recognize there can be a different view. You understand? That is the basic step towards resolution. William James said, whenever you are in conflict, conflict with someone, there is one factor, that is attitude. How, how is your behavior to people? If your attitude is adverse, it's going to ruin the relationship. People refuse to recognize there is a conflict. People avoid to resolve a conflict. People may agree to resolve a conflict. People disagree. Then there's always shifting the blame. I am not responsible. Why should I take care? Aggressive stand is very, very common. And blowing out of proportion is also a very, very common trait among human beings. So that's how the conflict tends to escalate. I'm sure all of you know about various types of dispute resolution. The so-called alternative, I always call it as now, is appropriate dispute resolution process. It's basic as negotiation, conciliation, mediation, arbitration, judicial settlement, local, very briefly. You know all, but I don't want much to dwell about arbitration. It's a luxurious litigation. It's a luxurious litigation where people can afford to spend in private to resolve the dispute based on an agreement. It's not that as inexpensive as a court litigation is, but it's expected to be resolved in a time frame which does not really happen in India. Are you aware of what is Lok Adalat is? Lok Adalat is a new it's a hybrid system of an alternate dispute resolution mechanism under the Legal Services Authority of India Act, where court cases are sent to local adalits. The local adalit means public courts, where one judge and a member of the bar or any member from the society is called to sit, discuss with the parties to bring out a settlement. Conciliation is something similar to mediation, but not really mediation. Where the conciliator is not the trained mediator, need not be a trained mediator. 
but he uses his persuasive kids to per persuade a party to settle. Why don't you do this? This is the best option. So the party's role in arriving a settlement is limited, more often determined by the conciliator who persuades, tries to educate the person, this is better, this is good for you, this is bad for you. Judicial settlement is a, in a pending case, the judge calls a party and says, listen, why don't you guys come to my chamber where I give you to resolve. But the judicial settlement in India is different from judicial settlement abroad. If it happens up out in, in a western country, the judge will not resume the matter. In the event there is no settlement, he retires from the case, recuses from the case, and some other judge has it. But that is not the case in India. The judge calls them, if there is no settlement, the matter proceeds. Now coming to the main topic, it took more than an hour for me, my apologies. <coughs> Mediation is a voluntary process. Why do I say voluntary? No one can first force any parties to mediation, unlike arbitration. Once you try sign an arbitration clause, agreement containing an arbitration clause, you can't back out of it. Whereas mediation, even though you agree for mediation, you can back out of it. So it's a voluntary process. You can go for mediation or even walk out of a mediation in the middle. After going there for mediation, you can walk out of it. Or to sign up, as you are about to sign a mediation and resettlement, then you, at that time also you can back out of it. <coughs> it's a non-adversarial process. In a mediation process, we don't encourage blame game. If you have to blame someone, you have to blame in private. That's a process. There's a joint session and a private session. We mediate as a joint session with all the parties then goes into private session and will be shuttling. The shuttle diplomacy between one, one party and another party will be shuttling. So in the private sessions, you will be talking about blame games, a lot of confidential information shared, which you say should not be disclosed to the other parties. The mediator is always a trained mediator. There is a process involved where he has to undergo 40 hours of training and with 10 successful co-mediation. Then only he is given it's certified and accredited. And what we do in mediation is not like arbitration or court litigation. We don't address the disputes, we address the conflicts. We try to remove the conflict, not just merely addressing the dispute. We try to put an end to the conflict totally. So what we have to do? We have to listen. Mediator talks less in a mediation room. He listens to the parties. And he identifies and addresses where the conflict lies. And plays a very, very facilitative role in a very systematic and scientific manner. And helps the party to self-determine a settlement. Both the parties have to agree and the determination is not done by the mediator. The mediator will not express his views. The mediator will not tell your case is good, your case is bad. You are a good person, he is a bad person. You are likely to win this case, likely to lose this case. This option is better for you, this solution is best for you. No. Unlike conciliation, a mediator does not even suggest it is not an evaluative process, it is a non-evaluative process, but it is only facilitative. Then you may ask me, then what the hell are you doing? You don't give suggestions, you don't give opinions, you don't, give, you don't say how to resolve, then what, what sort of mediator are you? Sir, that is the skill that one has to undergo and learn during the training program. Once you experience the process of mediation, you will understand the beauty of what mediation is all about. And whatever happens in mediation is not recorded. The entire process is confidential. <coughs> no court can summon the mediator to give evidence. No court can ask what happened, give a report as to what happened in the mediation. The court can only ask where is the settlement? That's all. Whether there is a settlement or not settlement. The court cannot ask who is not, who did not cooperate for a settlement. The entire process is confidential. And the mediator is an independent and neutral person. Can you tell me what is the difference between independent and neutral? 
Can anyone tell me? What is the difference between independent and neutral? Independent is, uh, he stakes his own, he's still made down, the discussion of it. He will not depend on anybody to, when, while arriving at the... Not, not really. Any other... Unbiased. Pardon? He's unbiased. Unbiased. But what's the difference between independent and neutral? Not related. In what way? Okay. Your director's disclosure of interest, right? New balance sheets. Okay. You should not be interested in either in the parties or in the subject matter, directly or indirectly. Okay. I should disclose my interest in the beginning of a mediation session. I have to disclose my interest. Whether I am interested in the dispute as such, whether I get a indirect benefit of a mediation, though I am not connected to the mediation process, if this settlement happens, for example, I will give you. There is a real estate dispute on specific performance. There is a, a developer and a landlord, and there is a dispute comes to you as a mediator. I get involved because I know very well my son has entered into an agreement with the developer to buy the property. If the property comes up, he is going to get the property. If the matter is not settled, my son is not going to get the property. Am I not interested? I am not, I'm not bothered about these points. Indirectly, my son may be interested. Or one of the party may be my relative, one of my client. So, as I said, disclosure of interest is very, very important. An independent person is not interested either in the party or in the dispute. A neutral person is also independent, is also unbiased. Independent also has to be unbiased. But, I will give you a standing example. And person who is not independent, can you give me an example? I gave you this example of children, no? Ram and Shyam fighting. As a parent, am I not interested in my children? Okay. <coughs> when I am interested in my children, can I call myself as an independent person? No. I often use this example. In Mahabharata, Lord Krishna meant us a mediator, we say. But once you are, if at all, you undergo the training as a mediator, then you realize why the Mahabharata was could have been averted had Krishna been a neutral person, an independent person. He was not an independent person. His sister Subhadra had married Arjuna. There is a conflict of interest. Will the Kauravas trust him? No. There is a difference. You all know about the famous the Manipal Pais dispute. Okay. I was involved in the litigation. It's, it's open secret, so there's no. Uh, the first dispute, first settlement, mediation happened, so called conciliation happened. By whom? Can you tell? By Dhirubhai. He brought the warring cousins of Manipal group together and tried to come up with a solution. Did it last long? No, it failed. Why? Because the other group did not trust that they got, they didn't believe that they got a fair option to settle because Mr. Ramesh Pai was on the board of Reliance. It was not done. The settlement happened through C. Subramaniam, former governor of Maharashtra, former So what they want is that a person should be uninterested, not related in the subject matter or on the persons. This is a simple example. So disclosure of interest is by way of it, is important and you have to be neutral and unbiased. What, what is neutral? I don't evaluate, I don't tell, listen, you got a good case. Sir, you got a bad case, you should be withdrawing the case. No. We don't do that. There are skills which we make people realize that their case is good or case is bad. That is a skill which is imparted through a training mediator. 
and the outcome is self-determination by the parties. The party should not say, no, the mediator asked us to settle in this manner, I settled it. <coughs> Later on, he will blame the mediator for this. Even if the settlement is wrong, but it is determined by the own parties, they will not say, no, I made it, took a wrong decision, they will accept it. Generally, they are fairly wise enough to settle it. Arbitration is uh, nothing but a miniature court. It's adversarial. As I said, mediation is not adversarial. I also told the difference between conciliation and mediation. Conciliation is not, need not necessarily be all mediations are conciliation, but all conciliations are not mediation. A conciliator need not necessarily be a trained mediator. A conciliator can impose his view, can his liberty to persuade people. Lokadalat, I told you. Local knowledge is always a little bit of persuasion and fear that there is a judge sitting there like settle it. Panchayat, I don't want to, well, I already said this. Mediation trends. <coughs> Everyone talks about the Western world, how fast things are. Why there is no backlog in, media, uh, in, in the courts in the US? Why the, there is great efficiency in justice dispensation in the Western world is <coughs> So when we ask a question and we can look into it, are you aware the moment you go to file a case in the court in USA, the judge will call you and call both the parties and say please go for mediation. Are you aware? By compulsion, you have to go for mediation. Okay. Hiro, you said it's a voluntary process. Now you are saying by compulsion. Why I say compulsion is that if I refuse to go for mediation, I said no, I want an order by this court, I don't believe in this mediation. Fair enough. But assuming if I lose the case, the cost that is going to be imposed on me will be horrendous. The court will say yes, you have every right, it's a voluntary process, we'll not think. But you wasted the court's time. You wasted several hours of the court's time. I want you, I asked you to go for mediation, you refused. Now that you have refused, the cost is on you. The cost will be the cost of the salary, the staff, everyone who employed by the court to devote the time. Virtually, a job done by a cost accountant as to time, and proportion of time devoted to other particular case, and it will be killing. If the claim is for one million dollar, he'll end up paying twice the amount almost as court costs. So what people do? They don't refuse. When a suggestion is made by the judge to go for mediation, they go. So 95% of the disputes are for private mediation in the USA. But, uh, before, I need to tell this. Today, as what happens is that even before I go to the court to initiate litigation, lawyers or parties themselves approach private mediation centers. They exchange notices. Listen, this is a matter that we need to resolve mutually by going through mediation. Let us resolve. So 95% of the disputants go to private mediation centers. So out of the balance 5% people go to mediation centers, to the courts. Among that, 95% of the cases that go to the court, are, they go to the <coughs> mediation centers. It's called court annex mediation. Private mediation and court annex mediation. Court annex mediation are, can be judges, can be private mediations are attached to the courts. If the matter is settled, well and good. If the matter is not settled, then the cost implication is going to be horrible on the parties. Success rate in mediation is now in the US is 95%. I can give you, as far as India is concerned, Bangalore Mediation Center, it's a court annex mediation center, 69% success rate. And Delhi Mediation Center is doing very well, 90% is a success rate. 
average time for a settlement can you be 112 minutes just 110 minutes maximum time taken is 48 hours shortest time taken is 1 hour is it not better than arbitration is it not better than court litigation and average session is about less than 2 the time taken and session are relevant to India as such <coughs> there are various types of mediation community mediation, commercial mediation community mission is, is very things <coughs> like I represent Bank, both BMC Bangalore Mediation Centre as a Cortenex Centre as well as Bangalore International Mediation Arbitration Centre how many of you live in apartments? you have a society are there not disputes within the members? <coughs> are there not disputes between the members and uh, the society? Yes, in court cases also. There are court cases. <laughs> are you aware most of the societies are registered with BIMAC to resolve the disputes? Inter-members, inter-residence disputes, dis disputes between society and members, society and the vendors. They get the disputes resolved in less than two cities. It's called community mediation. Commercial mediation is all know any, any sort of commercial disputes as such. <coughs> Restorative justice mediation is that, it's not in India, but it's in prevailing in some of the part in Europe, where a crime is commit, uh, committed and someone is asked to make good the loss. Basically, it's a more of a tortious claim where a damage is caused, an a fire is caused to a building who is responsible for it. So, someone is asked to make good it, good the loss. Family mediation is one which is very, very popular throughout the world where disputes about husband and wife, custody, maintenance, divorce, everything is taken care of. And what is this, what is called inherent mediation? The World Bank, IMF, most of the diplomatic services around the world adopt inherent mediation. Do you know what is inherent mediation? All these diplomatic centers are immune from being sued and beats. They cannot sue and they cannot be sued. As, assuming British Council wants, British Embassy wants to set up a building in Bangalore. It has to enter the contract with the contractor to put up the structure. Can you have an arbitration clause there? They must say, sorry, we are not subject to Indian law. You can't drag us to the court. But the contractor say, okay, what do I do? I can't sue you in the court in case the British courts the embassy does not pay me money. I can't sue you. You don't want to have an arbitration clause because the order has to be enforced in the court. What is my remedy? So these organizations what create what is called inherent mediation. They say, listen, we resort to mediation. These are the so many panelists we have. If you have a dispute, you choose one of the panelists, come to us, we'll also come to go to them, we'll also sit and resolve. Without mediation, no diplomatic development work can happen anywhere in the world. World Bank resolves its disputes through media. Have you ever heard World Bank suing someone, some other country for recovery of money? So there are various types, community, social mediation, intrastate mediation, a water dispute between two states can be resolved through mediation. Interstate mediation is a kind of dispute between two nations. Pre-litigation mediation is that what I said that before going to the courts we explore the possibility of resolving it and court annex mediation. Another important development during the past 10-15 years is what is called ad hoc mediation and institutional mediation. Ad hoc mediation, I am a mediator, trained mediator too. I will say okay, friends, you are all chartered accountants, is there any disputes? Come to me, I will enter to 
resolve this dispute as a mediator. I fix my own fees, I prepare my own rules, and just like ad hoc arbitration, you people have to come to me for ad hoc mediation. So there will be doubt in minds of people whether such a process will be transparent. What will be accountability of a mediator who there's a misconduct on his part. So people started switching to institutional mediation centers around the world. Court and mediations are matters that are pending in the courts. In order to have private mediation before going to the courts, BIMAC was Bangalore International Mediation Arbitration Center was the first of its kind started here. And Ancitra recognized, United Nations recognized such centers. Now what is the success rate in mediation in India today? Private mediation. 85 to 95%. It's extremely cost effective. I said average time taken is about two sittings. Maximum four or five sittings. Institutional mediation rules are transparent. Fee structures are transparent, available in the net. There's nothing, no hidden cost involved. And how are you going to enforce a settlement in mediation? This is very important. Mediation settlements in India are treated as settlement through, as a settlement leads to conciliation. A settlement leads to conciliation. <coughs> is deemed to be a consent award under section 34 of the Arbitration Conciliation Act. A consent award cannot be challenged in any court of law, cannot, there is no appeal. If settlement is reached between two parties, two or three parties in a dispute in a mediation process, the mediator will draw up the agreement, make the parties sign. There's an element of stamp duty that is to be paid as depending upon the state that is involved on payment of the stamp duty in the stamp document. It is final, binding, non-appealable. If one party commits a breach, it can be straight away enforced as a decree. It seems to be a decree. On the contrary, if an award is passed in an arbitration, other than a consent award, Section 34 of the Arbitration Conciliation Act enables a party to challenge that in a court. The litigation lasts long for several years. A an arbitral award given by a retired Supreme Court judge will be challenged before a district judge. <coughs> Irrespective of whether it is a Supreme Court judge or not, we are not concerned. It goes before a district judge. And our order of a district judge will go challenge to the High Court, from the High Court goes to the Supreme Court. Whereas a settlement that is reached in a mediation is final and binding. Except when it is collusive, fraudulent and affecting a third party right. Why do we call it a structured mediation? There is a deep foundation that is, goes into training of mediators and selection of mediators. If it is a court and mediation, there should be appropriate referrals to be made. There are various skills that need to be adopted. How the mediator communicates. He has to create trust building process. He creates a Corridor for negotiation. So, as I said, in, there's an independent mediator, he's neutral, he's 100% unbiased. It is not allowed to evaluate who's good, who's bad, etc. Entire process is confidential. He assists the parties to negotiate, improves the communication skills between the parties, improves the negotiation skills between the parties, works for a win win situation. I said mediation cannot be a replacement to the existing judicial system, but it is appropriate. 
So as I said, mediator is a non-evaluator and only a facilitator. I already touched upon section 89. Why mediation is so popular? I said that because it is cost effective, less time consuming, and the parties are able to determine what is their own outcome. In 1980, the litigation, you will see the first, you have a uh, 1980, <coughs> private mediation and court mediation was negligible. In 1990, you see the marginal increase in private mediation and court mediation was a significant increase. By 2000, litigation comes down to about less than 60% and mediation, private mediation is about 45%. And out of the 60% of litigation, 50, more than 50% of it goes towards court and ex-mediation. In 2010, private mediation overtakes litigation. And out of the litigation process, almost 90, 80 or 90% of it goes towards court and ex-mediation. In 2015, almost 90% of the disputes are resolved through private mediation. Court and ex-mediation, uh, the litigation has come down drastically and court and ex-mediation out of the whatever litigation, court and next mediation takes a substantial part. Success rate between private mediation and court mediation. In the initial stages in 1990, court mediation success rate was almost 60 65 percent. In 2000, success rate of mediation, court and next mediation is 80 percent, and private mediation is 70 percent. In 2010, Success rate in court and ex-mediation goes to 90% and private mediation 80%. In 2015, it's almost 95% on par. So it's not without any substance that people achieve settlements. People find it extremely popular. <coughs> people decide that mediation is the best option. Let me give share our BIMAC experience. The success rate in private mediation is 65% in India, average. Whereas Bangalore Center is about 90%. Court and next average is 55% throughout the country. Delhi is, it should be 90% now. It's 80 and 79 now. 134 countries throughout the world under ancestral initiative have supported mediation and Government of India has supported mediation. They were encouraged government departments to resolve disputes through mediation. This is a circle in August recently, August this year. In biomac example, in 2013-14, there were just 17 cases, private mediation which came to the center. 2014, there was a leapfrogging of 79, 79 cases. 2015 and 16, there are 436 cases. Till date in this year, 2017, is about 1100 cases, 1141. This shows the immense growth in popularity of mediation as the alternate dispute resolution process. Sir, these are all family disputes kind of a thing that are commercial? Pardon me? Most of these things are family disputes or commercial? Substantially are commercial disputes. Family disputes take longer time because too much commercial disputes are the ones which are done fast. I'm going to share this uh, video. I think that's got missed out. Okay. I think uh, uh, it should be uh, 16 to 17 now. 1,141. Now let me play this uh, video. Can you hear?
through here with uh, mediation and arbitration, <laughs> and this was uh, better than our expectation. And most parties would were not getting well in the beginning because it was about 11 months without communication. And the mediation session spent about 10 hours. It was pretty tough, but at the end. Uh, by the experience uh, from Mr. Tito and his, the other people who were helping him. Uh, everything was good and we had made a deal and the relationship was restored and now maybe we can have another business together with the company which was which were, we had a litigation. And uh, I think this place here, the people who helped us make a difference on the case. Um, it, it wasn't prepared as they, as they were, and we couldn't have reached the results we, we had. And we we're very pleased to, to have chosen the big binary as a mediation center. So, this is an $880 million dispute. It's a dispute between a company in India and a Brazilian entity. So parties agreed that they should resolve the dispute, otherwise there are a lot of complicated issues, a lot of taxation issues involved. There's a question of double taxation issues involved, there's withholding tax issues involved. And the uh, resolution started at 10 o'clock in the morning and got resolved by 8 o'clock in the evening. Continuous sessions. We accept uh, a lunch break of about 15 20 minutes. That is the popularity of mediation. It if it had gone to litigation or arbitration, it would have taken years and years and years. If you have observed the gentleman, his name is Mr. Fabian, he's from Brazil. He says the relationship got restored. A furnace was supplied to an INC company, major INC company. There was a default in payment. That is regarding a withholding tax. These guys detected the tax and they said, no, you have no business to withhold the tax. So they suspended the service and completion of the project. And these guys said, no, we are not going to release further payments. Eight months they were trying to negotiate, failed, and ultimately they realized the Brazilians contacted. He said, there is a center in Bangalore, why don't we dissolve the mediation? They came, sat, got it resolved. It's a more appropriate for commercial mediation because it makes a lot of commercial sense. Yes, family mediation also happens. A lot of family mediation happens, disputes, partition disputes, disputes between the husband and wife, but there is a disadvantage as well as mediation is concerned. Any settlement that needs to be treated as judgment and rem cannot be mediated. Do you know what is a judgment and rem and judgment in person? Judgment and rem is an order that will bind the entire world. A winding up of a company, an insolvency petition, a divorce is a judgment in them. So the entire world is bound by an order of divorce. That cannot be given a mediation center. But parties will agree, yes, we agree to divorce in this center. We'll file a joint petition before the court and we'll get it settled. If there is a dispute between two groups of shareholders, they, they, they agree, okay, we'll agree to dissolve this, we'll file a property joining a petition on a voluntary liquidation. So there is always a consent element. Now, can there be a settlement in a criminal proceedings? <coughs> the Supreme Court reasoned, Delhi High Court, sorry, Delhi High Court reasoned for 10 days back, I said, yes, mediation should be explored even in criminal matters, especially 138 proceedings. Wherever there is a dispute among husband and wife, there is a case of dowry harassment or 
Section 4 and 5 of the Dowdy Prohibition Act, the Domestic Violence Act, or a dispute between partnership partners, whether the case of cheating or so on, so just for the sake of the case being done, these things should be resolved through mediation. But the criminal cases cannot be withdrawn. Go to the High Court and say, listen, we have resolved this through mediation. Please help us to watch the case. So that is the proactive role played by the courts to resolve disputes even in some other criminal matters. There are certain guidelines. The Supreme Court also said certain matters cannot be, as I said, judgment in them cannot be done. When there is a serious allegation of crime, fraud, offense against the state, there cannot be mediation. Right? Yeah. Now I welcome questions from all of you, starting from my friend there. Sir, I understood that the settlement in a mediation will be governed by the arbitration and cancellation. So, if you are not a party to the arbitration, you cannot object to the arbitration award unless your rights are intervened by the award. Is that right? This is what uh, I have heard also and I understood from your uh, statement. Yeah, an award in an arbitration is per se different from a settlement award in conciliation. Though the section 73 of the Conciliation Act very clearly says a consent that is given, made, a consent, a settlement that is drawn in conciliation is deemed to be a consent award in the arbitration. That cannot be challenged. Even in the arbitration where both the parties agree to settle, that cannot be challenged. But if there is an award without consent, in an arbitration that can be challenged on various grounds. So, sir, uh, let us presume that between you and me there is an arbitration. Yes. We have given consent to the arbitration proceedings. So, there is no dispute on that. Can a party C, who is a third party, who feels that his rights are affected by this arbitration award, well, can he be a party to, um, to challenge the award? A third party, if he feels an award infringes his right and he is not a party to the proceeding, he can challenge it. No settlement ex to the exclusion of a third party is binding on the third party. Similarly, even a court decree, if, even if a court decree, a party is not, if I am not made a party in a proceedings and my property is going to be taken away, the decree is not binding on me. I can challenge it. The same logic applies. Okay. Uh, just to yeah, please. proceed further on the same question. If you see the Dukomo Settlement Award, there was an arbitration award by the Letter Court of International Arbitration between Dukomo and Tata Sons for <coughs> Tata Sons having failed one of the articles in the shareholder agreement, $1.3 billion has been awarded as a damages to Dukomo. Now, uh, it came to Delhi High Court for execution. So, RBI intervened, stating that this involves remittance of foreign currency over the country. Therefore, I should be heard. Yes, Delhi High Court allowed RBI to be heard, but it said, you are not a party to the arbitration award, and therefore, you have no right to intervene, and therefore, your arguments are rejected. And finally, the arbitration award was allowed to be executed, and the money also has now gone out of it's, the country. It's a very unfortunate situation because a third party right, including government, right? So basically, there's a rule of public policy which was in play till now. Recently, the Supreme Court diluted the scope of what is public policy. What is public policy? An award, a foreign award, which infringes the, contravenes any Indian law. This opposed to public policy. Yeah, okay. uh, the, the, the judge while giving the judgment quoted that while administrating the company act, central government has to be a party wherever the rights of the national security or any other issues are contemplated to be infringed. Whereas arbitration and conciliation act does not provide for such intervention by RBI, and therefore maybe this is a gap. Until it is bridged, you don't have a right to, infer, to be a party to stop the execution, and therefore your uh, your petition is dismissed. This is what I. Uh, now the money has gone out of the country. 
these things are bound to happen because legislative competence over a period of time lacks forethought. And you don't foresee what are the follow-ups of it. Any legislation is done with a good intention. But to expect these sort of exigencies, you need to have tremendous amount of foresight. Let me tell you, you have Indian Evidence Act, the Indian Contract Act, the Indian Penal Code, the Civil Procedure Code, the Criminal Procedure Code, they are almost more than 100 years old or 150 years old, they undergone very little tinkering. You have a Companies Act, Amendment 1956 in 2000. Okay, half mm, the amendments have not been, more than half, not been even given effect to. 2013, you have a new act. Again, 70% of the 2013 act has not been given effect to. <coughs> now you have come to, I think, there's so much of looking at. Today we had an argument yes, yes. on jurisdiction, corporate person. Jurisdiction on where this petition has to be filed, whether NCLT Bombay or NCLT Bangalore, because the difference the given is that jurisdiction of the person, the registered office where the corporate person is situated, they don't say corporate data is situated. Now the corporate data says go. It's not from the, the you won't find it in Bombay. Why do you come to my place? It can always be transferred. The issue is who is a corporate person? Is this corporate person different from corporate data? The language used on jurisdiction is only corporate person. So which jurisdiction? Corporate person who is the the corporate data's jurisdiction or the the creditor's jurisdiction? So NCLT NCLT having jurisdiction over the Please examine. The registered office where the corporate data is situated. That branch base we can it's, it's not so. This was being examined today. The wording they use is corporate person, not corporate data. Anything that is cooked in haste is a waste. With due respect to the insolvent bill, it's going to create more and more problem than it's going to help people. But NCFT and NCFT, other tribunal documents you see. The IBC has defined adjudicating authority and for the moment NCLT has been designated as the adjudicating authority. Tomorrow, <coughs> Insolvency Bankruptcy Board of India designates a special court as the adjudicating authority, NCLT will be withdrawn and the cases will be transferred. Yeah, as of now, there are a lot of issues. In fact, we are challenging Karnataka High Court of the constitutional validity of the NCLT itself. The Madras Bar Association case, Sahar Gandhi vs. Uh, Union of India, very clear, the Supreme Court says, Insolvency jurisdiction cannot go to a tribunal. That was being overlooked when they constituted this. I said judgment in them. A tribunal can't pass a judgment. It can only pass an order. Uh, for 238 of uh, IBC is a non obstante clause. Yeah, so but will, there, there are a lot of issues. If enforce any other law, we will get uh, subordination to IBC. Yeah, but the, there are. When there is a conflict and ambiguity, Article 141 would rule. Article 141 is the law laid out by the Supreme Court. The Constitution then says, as observed, what had happened is it's the Radi Committee report says that corporate disputes <coughs> should go to a tribunal. But insolvency proceedings cannot be handled by a tribunal. Now, final judgment in the Madras Bar Association case, the Supreme Court says, yes, tribunal is con can. can handle corporate disputes. Ignore the relevant portion of it. Though it touch, that they touch about this, perhaps by oversight they didn't say insolvency cannot be brought in the tribunal. That is the issue that has come up to the courts now. Everywhere in the country now, we started in Bangalore, and all other states have been following. Sir, so if you say that, the same Supreme Court wants special courts formed to try corruption cases against politicians, legislators and parliamentarians. So, this is a earmark. Uh, no, there is a difference between a court and a tribunal. 
a family court is a special court to try that. CBA court is a special court to try that. It's a tribunal. No. It is a high court. No, this is subordinate to the high court. Yeah, it's an it's an international dispute because the BIMAC rules are in the line with the Ancitra Code, Dispute Resolution Code, and recognized the rules are recognized by Ancitra. An award passed in under the Ancitra rule, the BIMAC rules in India, can be enforced in any foreign jurisdiction which comes within the regime of Ancitra. Can everybody can challenge this award? As far as the mediations in throughout the world, whoever signed party to that, all the countries were signatories to the Geneva Convention, very clearly have said that a settlement award, a consent award cannot be challenged. Then we can come up and we are going through this process of mediation. Can we come out of this mediation process before the... Yes. Yes. No judgment. Before they sign. You have to sign. If you are not willing to sign, where is the settlement? It happens in a court and mediation often, but not in a private mediation, because people who come for private mediation, especially commercial mediation, they are very, very conscious of the time and money that they spend. They may negotiate, they may be hard in bargaining. Yes. The BIMAC certifies mediators. Yes. And it is valid across the world? Across the world, yeah. And what would be the duration and the cost of this? It's, uh, the cost uh, would be, but it's supposed to be one of the cheapest in the world. It's, uh, it's a 40 hour program, intensive continuous 5 day program. And uh, the last time they fixed the fee as uh, about 25,000 rupees. Where the Government of India, Department of Corporate Affairs gave a training, bringing Europeans and they charge about 40,000. Okay. The intent is to promote mediation, then we thought we should have it lower. And then we, want, we select the trains. Quite a few chartered accountants and company secretaries have been trained by the centre. I am a master trainer in mediation. So, like, uh, like evaluation or IBC, uh, has been notified, like, suppose you have to be a resolution professional or a decorator, you, have, you should pass the limited insolvency exam. If you want to be a valuer under the Companies Act, the team you must be a registered valuer as per the company's registered valuation rules. Like this, mediation arbitration has just been notified. See, basically, there's no law on mediation in the country so far. Exactly. It's, there's no law as such. There's a bill that we have drafted and given. Now we have suggested don't unnecessarily bring a new bill, make an amendment to the Arbitration Conciliation Act. But every high court in the country have adopted the rules. The rules are all uniform because there is a body called Mediation Conciliation Project Committee of the Supreme Court that has prescribed the rules. It's in conformity with global norms. It's a 40 hour training and this, it's, what it is for court and the selection is done by the judiciary. Whereas centers like us, we do the selection process. We make it as 10 years standing at the bar or experience as a charter account as a company secretary is mandatory. Because we want people to, when parties come to a person, they should respect your experience, knowledge, and age. It's it, elsewhere in the world, you know, youngsters are being given. Uh, you, you come out with you have 23, 24, 25 year old people sitting as mediators. To what extent you, you command your she will command respect? We don't know. Any other doubts? Consultation clause. Pardon? Consultation clause. Yes. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, that's a very, very important question because among the various types of mediation, there's called what is called R met R and met R met R met R is what in an arbitration proceedings. The arbitrator will persuade the parties, okay, some of these disputes we can find, why don't you resolve? We had an issue, I give you an example, who is a favorite child? There may be tricky situations in law where an arbitral award is not going to be that easy. So the arbitrator will decide what are the issues that can be arbitrated, what issues cannot be arbitrated. So 
issues that cannot be arbitrated easily. It lasts a party why don't you go for mediation? You go for mediation, resolve that, come back. In case you are not able to resolve that, come back to So it's our arbitration, <coughs> mediation, then in case mediation fails, you come back to arbitration. Or there can be partial mediation, partial arbitration. Similarly, in mediation also, certain aspects the mediators will see, okay, these matters should be arbitrated because there are so many legal issues involved. So this will park it for arbitration. We do the mediation now, go back to arbitration. In case arbitration you are not happy with it, again you can come back. That's called med or med. That is widely allowed permissible. So in this case, the arbitration mediation, then again arbitration. Then arbitration award will cover all these issues, whether it turns on mediation. No, there will be two segregated awards. Settlement is different because it cannot be challenged. As well as award which is not settled, there is a possibility of being challenged. Any other questions? So how can a CA become a mediator? Sir? No, we have to pass it the 40 you have to undergo it's training. It's not a question of 40 hours rigorous training. It happens in background? It happens in background. Sir, CA should also conduct a certificate course for mediation, arbitration and no, that is, it's a combined program, but to practice as a mediator, you need to have been accredited by one of the high court mediation centers or centers like BIMAC. Now, without that, you can't practice. And even if someone, any individual or someone, there are some some private entities offering today. How far it will be recognized outside India, we don't know. Many of the countries don't. So it's, we always go for an accredited mediation center certificate. Like BIMAC is as a global understanding with almost all mediation centers around the world. It closely works with European Union mediation centers, French mediation centers, and uh, various other centers around the world as such. And also we should check whether the practicing China program, suppose it gets qualified or certified. No, there's no conflict. No, no, there is no conflict, but the institute allow you to continue to practice as also be a mediator. That they should allow because the lawyers are allowed. And your Companies Act 2013 allows mediation. I don't recall the section just like that. Yes, there is a provision where corporate disputes, NCIT should refer the matter to a panel of mediators. There is already a panel of mediators. Three mediators trained uh, by BIMAC or in the panel already throughout the country. Or under the company sector, more rules have been modified. No, no, no. Department of Corporate Affairs has come out with the rules, set of rules, are which are more, with which more or less. Pardon? Who will be the mediator? Who, what is his qualification? How can he be appointed? Yes, yes there is a rule, set of rules. Is notified. notified. It's almost uh, one year ago now. Any other information? Are you satisfied? Thank you.